Hello there, I'm Jimmy Vegas and this is how to create a Grand Theft Auto style game in Unity and welcome to episode 46. In this tutorial we're going to pretty up our menu a little bit, add in some background, some animation and we're also going to make our buttons actually start working. Don't forget, click the subscribe button and click on the bell icon as well to stay up to date with every tutorial still to come in this series and everything else on game development on my channel. With that in mind, let's get to work. So first and foremost, I think we should add something to the background of our main menu rather than just the default skybox. Now, I think I mentioned it last tutorial what uh, my intentions were, and the best way of doing that is to go into a different scene and just import what we want. So in this instance, let's go into our scenes folder and let's go into open world. And obviously this is our big massive scene where we've been doing most of our work up until now. And what I think I'm going to do is if I go to, um, let's say let's go to the shops here and I want to take one of these city blocks. So all of this here, let's take, um, is that going to be enough? Have I selected everything? Oops. Okay. So I've selected a couple there. So I'm going to take all of that. Now, why is all that move? Oh, that's because, yeah, right. Now I see what's happening. I'm selecting um, all these different sections rather than the one section I do want. So let's take the bus stop. Uh, let's take the shops. Let's take the builds. Uh, let's take the street. And I think that should do. So I'm going to copy those. And let's go back into our main menu. And obviously you don't necessarily have to do the exact same thing as me. You could do something a little different. It's just, it's entirely up to you. It really, really is. So uh, let's paste them in our scene here. So let's go to the hierarchy and paste. And there we go. Now it's going to look a little bit different at the moment because we don't have some of the settings in place. We don't have the lighting the same as our other scene. Um, I may leave it for now, but again, it's something that you can play around with. So let's get all of this into place. Now, it doesn't matter where this actually is, as long as the camera is looking at it correctly. So let's take our camera and let's adjust the camera to be looking in the correct position. So let's move it over here. Let's move it up and let's move it closer to our buildings. And let's pan it down slightly. There we go, bring it backwards, maybe to about there. Uh, let's have a look at the game view. So that's now currently how it looks. So it, it does look better than it did. Uh, we just need to modify a couple of different things to make it look a little better. Obviously the first thing is going to be light. So let's go to uh, window. Let's go to rendering and let's go to lighting settings. Now let's firstly click auto generate uh, just to brighten the scene up a little bit. Uh, it may take a second. There we go. Oh, nope, still doing it, but we, it's all right. We can carry on working. Uh, let's also change the sky box to something else. So let's click the button and let's put sky. Uh, let's have sunny one sky. Again, you don't have to do the exact same as me. You could change yours uh, however you would want it to be. And uh, let's close that to go back into game. So you can see it does look slightly, slightly better. Um, let's add some extra lighting, although it is still baking down there. That may take some time, but again, it doesn't matter. We can still work while that progresses in the background. Uh, we've got the general idea here. You know, we've got our camera in place. Uh, let's add some extra lighting. So let's go game object. Let's go light. Let's have a small point light um, somewhere here, maybe. And let's increase the range to 50. See how that looks. I'm going to bring it over here a little bit. Uh, intensity. Now this may go a little crazy, but let's have it as 10. Yeah, so that's a bit mad. <laughs> so maybe reduce the intensity to three. Okay, so 
it's looking a little bit better. Um, it'll look much better, obviously, once we have uh, that completely done. But again, we can always work in the background for now. So let's add a quick animation to the camera just to give some movement to this particular scene. And I'm not sure if we should maybe add a wind zone or something. Let's see if a wind zone will impact anything right now. Uh, so um, what are we doing? I completely forgot what we're doing. Uh, wind zone, yeah. <laughs> I even said wind zone right then. Um, so game object, 3D object, and wind zone. And where has our wind zone gone? Oh, it's all the way over here. Don't think it's going to matter too much. Uh, let's press play and see if we have any movement in the trees. Yeah, there we go. We have very slight movement in the trees. So let's increase the main to three. So it may look a little bit clunky at the moment. Again, it's it's all because some stuff's going on in the background. So let's have our wind zone at maybe four. Okay, next let's create a camera animation. Uh, just a little small panning around thing, you know, just to give movement to the scene. Again, you don't have to do this. You could create a different animation. You could do different things. Um, so let's create. Uh, in fact, let's go do this in general animations. So in general animations, I'm going to now rename the main camera to menu cam. And let's go to animation. Let's click on create. And let's have this as menu wobble because I just want to use the word wobble. And let's press the record button. Now, our position is this right now. So we're going to come back to this position. So 33.03. .03. So firstly, let's change, uh, in fact, let's set, we'll keep us hold numbers, I think. That might be the best thing to do. So we'll have 33, and then after one second, let's have it as 43. And also on the, um, let's say the position has gone to 120. And then after, let's say another couple of seconds, so we'll have this as, let's say, in fact, let's say 200. Uh, we have got the rotation to 30. And the position on the Y, um, let's just have that. In fact, do you know what? Let's keep this. Let's have the X as 1, 10. And then let's have by 300, we have position back to 1, 17, and the rotation back to 33. Now, that's just a quick, simple animation, uh, but I think it is enough to highlight a little something else which I want to bring up in this tutorial. Uh, so let's stop that. Let's press play and just have a quick look at this animation. So again, it is a little bit janky, but don't worry about that. So I think that animation is a little bit too much, but it does bring forward um, something which looks a bit strange. And that is we can see outside the boundaries here. So what we can do for that is let's save our scene and let's go back into our other scene. Um, if I can find the scenes folder and open world. And what I'm going to do is I'm basically just going to take um, this whole section here, the uh, terrain. So let's take that. So copy. Let's go back into main menu and paste in the hierarchy. And there we go. And now we should be able to see that it doesn't quite look as bad. So I've taken not very much time in creating here. Uh, you should take a lot more time than what I've done. I've just done something very, very simple. So again, a best thing to probably do is if that's taken quite a while to auto generate, you could maybe not have auto generate on. In fact, should we turn it off for now? Uh, let's turn that off and let's press play. Okay. Still a little bit janky. Um, 
maybe we should in fact i'll change the animation at some other time let's not waste any more time with that you take time all the time you need to do that uh, so lo, let's go to our canvas and let's start with this new game button now if you remember quite some time ago uh, we created different scenes and then we went from one scene to another and if we go to file and build settings uh, let's click on add open scenes now what I want to do is close that back down and go to sample scene make sure we save now sample scene has absolutely nothing in it however it is still scene zero so if we built this game this would still render as a scene so what we would need to do is go to file build settings delete sample scene hopefully you've still got sample scene in there because there was a good reason we left it in there and then we drag main menu to the top and that now becomes scene zero we are going to have something else as scene zero, but for now, zero is all we need. So that means if we go back to our main menu, let's now make sure that our canvas, the new game, will actually function as a new game and start a new game for us. So how do we do that? Let's go to our scripts folder and UI, and let's right click, create C sharp script. And we'll have this as main, menu control now this script is going to start very small but it's actually going to grow significantly in size as we go through development so how do we make it so as we can hit new game and go to a new game well we just want it to work in its simplest terms for now click it and off we go we can add effects and everything later so let's get the functionality working so much like we did with the original scene change way back all them tutorials ago, we're going to have using unity engine dot scene management with a semicolon. And what this is going to do is add the ability to change scenes within this script. Now, we don't need at the moment void start or void update, but I am going to leave them in just in case we do at a later date. What we need to do now is make a method for our new game button. So this needs to be public void new game. Open close bracket, open curly bracket and hit return. Now, whenever we apply a method to a button, that method has to be public. Otherwise we won't be able to, it'll just not work. So make sure when we create the method, it has the word public before void. So what do we want this button to do? Well, we want to do a couple of things later on, you know, maybe more flashy or something, I guess. Uh, but for now, all we need it to do is take us to our intro scene. So let's say scene manager dot load scene. And at the moment it is scene one, which we may need to change. But for now, that should do the trick. Save that. Now, I, I always put scripts on my website. Um, but do you know what? I'm not going to put this script on my website uh, for this tutorial. I'll probably put it on when we have a little bit more to this script. The reason being is this is such a simple script to write. It's literally two lines of code that you write in. And I'm not sure you can go wrong with that, to be honest. Uh, so once we have those two lines of code in, we now need to attach our main menu. So let's go to game object, create empty. And we'll have this as menu controls. And let's attach our main menu control script to that object. Now, I'm gonna put this at the top and there are no variables to attach because we didn't create any. However, what we do need to do is make sure that our new game does indeed work. So let's go to canvas. Let's go to our new game button. And down here, if you scroll down, you'll see on click list is empty. We need to click on the plus button. And here where it's got non object, we need to drag and drop menu controls. And you'll see this no function button light up. We now need to click that down and click on main menu control. And then in that list, you'll then see new game. So what's happening here is the engine now knows that whenever this button is clicked, it has to run that method that we just wrote, which loads our other scene. So let's save this scene. Let's press play. 
And now let's go to, oh, there we go. It's looking a bit more smoother now. Uh, let's go to new game, hit it, and it will load us into our new game. Awesome. So, new game works. Great, we have other buttons. So next tutorial, what we're going to do is we are going to add in a splash screen. Remember I said there's going to be a different one for Zero. A splash screen is like an introduction scene to the game. You've all seen them playing games. Uh, we're also going to learn about saving and loading as well. So for example, when we get to our main scene, we need to save the game uh, so we can click load and go straight to that scene. So until that next tutorial, thanks very much for watching, guys.